glory. Hey, glory to God here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Ain't nobody like God anywhere. Hallelujah. God ever healed anybody in here? Ever, ever freed somebody? Everybody, anybody been free? It's all about Jesus. All about Jesus. I'm just happy to be in the house of the Lord with y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Amen. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. We're going to hear what God is saying. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to hear the Lord? Praise God. There is nobody like God. Amen. 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 I'm happy to have my niece here today, Jordan. Amen. She's from my son, Apostle Brian Wilson's church in Atlanta. So she, amen. So she going to be here. You're at South Carolina State basketball. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all about to see some ball playing now. Can't wait to go to the games. And I'm going to tell you now, she does not play. Yeah, she plays ball, but she don't play. <laughs> Amen. Woo, thank you for being here, baby. You done got me spoiled now. Oh, boy, I'm sure going to peace today. <laughs> you told me to, I'm going to do it. Amen, so let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get started. Minister Tammy, come help me <laughs> preach today. Amen. Pastor Deshaun, come on. And help me so that we can, we can just move forward in G. I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to what God himself is going to say. Y'all ready to hear God? Yeah. I am also. Yeah. I tell you, the Lord is just good. He's just kind of, everybody looking at me. I love this kind of looking at me. Amen. The Lord is good. You know, I want to bring uh, up. Honorary, honorary member, and um, I, I think this is um, going to be quite interesting. Quite, uh, Caitlin, come up and, and help help me preach today. <laughs> I don't think anybody here has to introduce yourself to Caitlin because she has been following the Feast of the Lord since what, 2017? 2017. And she can tell who's in the audience just by hearing your voice. It is remarkable. She just flew in to spend some time with us here from New Orleans, Nolens, Louisiana. And she's kind of she's kind of titter tottering about moving here. So we gonna see what the Lord does. Amen. Amen. So now, as a, as a new custom of something that I do, I, I like to introduce have people to introduce themselves so that you'll get to know who is who is about to minister to you. All right. Amen. All right. And let's go ahead and start with Minister Tammy Henry. Okay, I'm Minister Tammy Henry, and as you all know, I'm a member here at the Feast of the Lord. Um, <laughs> Where do you work? Okay, I work at uh, Richland School District 1. I teach uh, deaf and hard of hearing children. I also work as a counselor at the YMCA, and I'm getting ready to start a new venture with the University of South Carolina in one of their wellness programs. So. Woo! She teaches a free sign language class as one of our small groups. You have got to join up. Join up. OrangeburgChurch.com slash 
small groups. Amen. Amen. This is all toxic. Yeah. 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 Hey, everybody. <laughs> oh, praise him. <laughs> I'm Dijon Jackson. Nice to meet you all. Um, I, I work here at the Feast of the Lord, actually. Yes, yes, I'm yes. also an audiovisual entrepreneur, so I kind of do what I do in grid, but then also do it out loud. So, yes, yes, yes. Um, I have three beautiful girls. I'm married to Amicia Jackson. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> All right. Now, I think the, the, the number one question you get, Caitlin, is what? Yes. How old are you? <laughs> so I'm 27. 27. Yeah. <laughs> you just, ah, you just, he's like, what? Like he said, I'm from Louisiana, and I currently work in Rideshare, um, but I'll be applying soon for a program in Doctor of Occupational Therapy. And I've looked into some schools, and I'm thinking about uh, going to the school in Charleston. Woo! Amen. Now, you have a unique testimony about your birth. Can you briefly share that testimony? So, I was born uh, four months premature, and I was only 14 ounces, so I fit in the palm of my dad's hand. And the doctors were like, she's not going to live. And if she lives, she's going to have all these like developmental issues, um, possibly mental issues. And I wouldn't be able to walk, I wouldn't be able to speak, things like that. But um, none of that happened. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. God is good, isn't he? Oh, the Lord is so kind. Oh, I can't, I, I tell you, I just can't hardly wait to preach. God is just so perfect here. So today we're going to be talking about our own mental attacks. Our own mental attacks. Now, this message is three weeks old because if you, if, well, for those who know me, I like to get the message done the first part of the week. And this was supposed to be ministered two weeks ago, but God gave me another word that I ministered. I'm just tired. You remember that one? That was two weeks ago. And then last week, I preached in Trenton, New Jersey. And so now I'm preaching this. So this is three weeks old. It was already done. Slides already done. Nothing changed. It's just as it was three weeks ago. And the Lord said to preach this today. And... Looking at how you all have already responded, y'all need this message. Amen. Amen. So the word of the Lord says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. This is interesting. I have never heard the Lord speak to me about this scripture the way he did. Amen. And he said this, too many mental attacks are initiated by humans, not demons. Wow. Yes. Because according to the scripture we just read, humans tend to lean to their own understanding, not a demon's suggested understanding. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ain't nothing but the devil got you doing it. Ain't nothing but it. No, that's you got you that's doing right. that. That's it. Say so. Word of the Lord didn't say don't lean to a demon's understanding. No, don't lean to your own. Right. Our own mental attacks. Self-inflicted mental attacks because we lean to our own understanding. Minister Tammy, yes, sir. why is it so easy to lean to our own understanding instead of following what God says? As, as the word of the Lord says. Um, first I wanna say, you must have been all in our house We've been talking about this very scripture. Wow. About, um, you know, the fact of interviewing our thoughts. 
you know, interview it if it's a thought of if it's a thought of God, thought of the devil, or is it your own thought? And so I think that a lot of times that people lean to their um, own understanding because it's it's sometimes it's about what we want. Yes. We want to do this. We want to do that. We want it this way. We want it that way. And a lot of times we don't consult God to find out what is His way. Mm. What does He want us to do? And and helping us understand what is going on, why it's going on, and why we have to do it this way. Sometimes we don't even need to know why we have to do it. Just do it because God says <laughs> do it. Be obedient to what He says. Yes. Exactly. Amen. Well, you know, all of the messages are prophetic. And so from three weeks ago to be today, and this is what y'all been talking about this week, it's, it's, it's the Lord. It's 100% the Lord. Thus, we are likelier to initiate and complete an attack on our minds than anyone else. We are more likely to inflict, self-inflict, an attack. Woo! This one doing this, that one doing that, that one doing that. No, you're doing it to yourself. All right. How is it, and I can prove it, and then Pastor John wants you to speak. I can prove it because how is it that you're going through this, and then you go and you tell somebody else. You talk to Pastor Glover and say, man, this, this, that, and other. He said, oh, you have to do it. Leave it alone. Why do you even have to respond? Why do you even have to say anything? Amen. You did it to yourself, in other words. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know y'all quiet. Y'all thinking about that. Go ahead, because you said that's crazy. So that, that means you have something to add to that. You know, I'm reminded that who, who, how we think is who we really are. You know, that's, that's where we live. We live in our thoughts. We live always continuously thinking about things. Yes. And when we see them manifest, mm. you know, out in the open, Sometimes we're shocked to see that out loud about ourselves, but it really identifies how planted the word is in us. Oh. You know, it, it's like, you know, we get to really get to see and reflect on the fact that, you know what, I don't, I don't really have the word in me. I don't have a response for this. Mm. You know, I don't have a response in my nature for the word of God to this. You know what I mean? And it, it just identifies so much of the mental anguish that we go Oof. through because we just, we refuse to train ourselves as little children with the word of God. Like, we really don't dig into the meat of it and really meditate on it for it to make the positive change that it needs to. And that, therefore, we constantly see the same patterns over and over again. Come on. With our own mental thinking and going through the same cycles because Holy. we refuse to change. Yes. So that's why that was crazy. Yeah. Okay, okay. How can we end this self-inflicted cycle that's damaging our mental health? How? Because it, and it is damaging our mental health. We, we experience something and it could be a shock or it could be expected. And then we attack ourselves with all these thoughts, these fears, these anxieties. We make them up and we blame the devil. And the devil's like, thanks, but I didn't do it. You helping me out. How can we end? What is a way, Caitlin, that we can end this self-inflicted cycle? By casting down imaginations. All right. Wow. No, okay. How do we cast down imaginations? Whenever you're in a situation and something happens that you may not like, you have to get God's understanding and then cast down all the other imaginations that go against what he's saying. Wow. There it is. Get God's understanding. Get God's understanding. How do we get God's understanding? By going to him and asking him what his thoughts are about the situation or the circumstances that we're in. Why people don't like to do that? Why? Did, because see, this this is the the, the, the premise of what of what God is saying. We're thinking about it ourselves. We're leaning to our own understanding. Why don't y'all come to me first about it? Why don't people like to go to him first? 
I think it's because we're more familiar with ourselves. Oof. And our understanding is what we're most, most comfortable with. We're not comfortable going to God and waiting to see what he has to say, but being having patience to right. wait to get his understanding. It's easier yes. to just make up something and jump to conclusions. Goodness, the waiting. We don't want to wait. Yes. And I will also add, like, um, based on the patience where she said, like, it's, it's, we don't realize that everything about our faith is a discipline. So, is what? A discipline. So okay. being with God takes discipline. It takes a discipline. And if you don't have a disciplined life on the outside and the natural, it's very hard to adopt a, a, a discipline Goodness. of praying to actually speak to God and communicate with yes. him without the discipline. Because mm. you will have to wait on God. Amen. Yes. You're not going to hear his you're not going to hear his voice immediately. You know? And God is God is not like a human. He's he's you're gonna have to spend some time. He's gonna require you pay the price. He's gonna require right. you because he's worth it. So Man. wait on me. You know, wait on me. Right. Tear it from me. Put put your effort into it. Mm. You're not just gonna be able to just God, well, I said something to you and you didn't say nothing to the back, so I'm gonna go ahead and do something else. You know, wow. Like, God ain't like that. He's not cheap. Goodness gracious. Waiting on God is so important. Yes, I want you to speak because I don't want to forget what, what, what the Holy Spirit just said. And then I promise you, you coming on. You know, I love this because nobody knows they're coming up. And then when they come up, they're ready. I love it. But when you were talking about patience, the Holy Spirit said to me that people who have a habit of arriving late, or when they're getting ready, they're rushing, rushing, rushing. The Holy Spirit just said to me, those who have those types of issues, they have that type of lifestyle. He said, those are the people who do not like waiting on God. They do not like waiting on the Lord. If it's always, okay, I got to get that, got to get, got it. They're rush, rush, rush. He said, those people don't like waiting on God. We have to wait for the red light to turn green. We have to wait in the doctor's, dentist, chiropractor's office until they call us. We have to wait in line, even if it's self-service. You still have to wait till you go. We wait on everything and everybody else, but we don't want to wait on God. Run that red light if you want to. But see, that's the thing. We run God's red lights, and it's, it's like, you know, you know how people run the red light? <laughs> Making sure there's no cops and going on. It's still wrong. That's it. Whether the police saw you do it or not, it's still wrong. Yeah. Amen. So is that the mentality? I can do as long as I don't get caught? No. Oh. Because I don't want to wait. Okay, I got it out now. Your turn. <laughs> I was going to say, um, while I was sitting here and every, when they were sharing, um, the Holy Spirit, Spirit um, shared with me, uh, it's like a learned behavior. Ooh. Uh, because it's almost like a baby. Gracious. When a baby is um, crying, the first, uh, our first reaction as parents is we want to give them what they want to, to keep them calm and to keep them quiet. Yeah. And so a lot of times that's what happens with us. Um, when we start crying and pouting, we want what we want and because we want to be calm. We want to be peaceful. We want to have our way. But um, as mothers know, we know our children cry. We know if they need milk. We know if they're hurting. We know if they need us. So that's how we have to be. That's how God is with us. He knows when, he need, when we need him, you know, but we got to be able to um, be, wait on him. Yes. You know, wait on him to come instead of and uh, putting ourselves in the way and, and, and trying to do something that we know that he needs to do. So our, that was just what I wanted to share. Goodness gracious. That reminded me of a scripture. Have you, have you thought about this? How is it that a little baby, a child, homeschooled in the whole nine yards, always around the parent, how in the world did they learn devilishment? 
how did they learn to not do what they are told? You have, you, the only influence is here. Everything you're watching on TV is how to brush your teeth, how to tie your shoe. How do you learn that, that you're doing something and you hear mama, daddy come and you, where'd you learn that from? You knew that was wrong. You want the answer? Yes. The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. What does the second part say? But the rod of correction will drive it far from them. The rod of correction. <laughs> is that not the word? That is exactly what the scripture says. And so when you were talking, the Lord gave uh, reminded me of that because some people still have foolishness bound to them and they long left childhood years. Yeah. Yeah. Foolishness is still bound wow. and then God said, now you're going to wait. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What do you do with children? You put them in Time out. wait. wait. Wow, wow, wow. Come on. You still got you still Holy Ghost here. You still got foolishness bound in your heart. You don't want to wait on me? I'm not, come, I'm not going to come on your time. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Romans 1, 20 and 21. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature and attributes, that is, his eternal power and divinity have been made intelligible and clearly discernible and in and through the things that have been made, his handy works. So men are without excuse altogether, without any defense or justification, verse 21, because, and this is he talking about God, because when they knew and recognized him as God, they did not honor and glorify him as God or give him thanks. But what did they do? But instead they became futile and godless in their thinking. Okay, take your time and look at this part. With vain imaginings, foolish, I forgot this was the next scripture after the Lord just said what he said, foolish reasoning and stupid speculations and their senseless minds were darkened. God has proven who he is, yet people don't honor and glorify him. Instead, some think about themselves. Not God. They don't honor God. They think about themselves. They're vain. It's just full of vanity. And they imagine foolishness. You know people like that? Just everything's about themselves. And, and, and they just imagine just foolishness. They even believe stupid speculations. I'm just talking about what the scripture is talking about. Amen. That are not the truth. Lord, help us all, Jesus. And should never have ever and even been a consideration for a hired thought. Their minds, now dark, cannot sense truth. Their minds are dark, can't sense truth. Everything's about them. Imagine stupid stuff. Yes. They imagine foolish stuff. Believe stupid stuff. And their minds are dark. Even when they hear the truth, they don't know the truth. Argue with the truth. Backbite against the truth. Actually hate the truth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Any, any, any more? Who wants to speak on that? Any one of y'all. That was heavy. That's heavy. But I think also, like, us being saints, we always think that we have to repair, 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 help, help, help. But this is the current status of how people are living. Oof. Yeah. When you say this is the current status, what? Like, people are making a decision for their minds to be darkened, even in the church. Mm. They're making the decision. So you, you minister to them, you tell them the truth, you give them, you know, you give them your positive feedback. You even alter the way you talk sometimes to make sure you accommodate. And they don't want to listen, you know. Yeah. All right. And you did your job, saints. You did your job. Right. You know, when people, people don't want to listen and they don't want to, they don't, they don't want to listen to reason, you're doing it out of love. And they, they just don't want to abide by the word of God or they don't want to listen to the fact that you, you know, you're trying to point something out loving to them. Their mind will be darkened, and it's, you can't do anything about it. So when you face somebody who has that darkened mind, all you can do is be a light. Amen. That's all we Amen. can do. Amen. They have to choose to come into the light or stay dark. Wow. Luke 10, 38 through 42, coming to a close now. Now, while they were on their way, it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. But Martha... <laughs> Overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me and to lend a hand and do her part along with me. Here I am serving Jesus, and she's sitting there listening to you, and, and I, I'm, I'm doing everything. So I guess that ain't nothing to you. I mean, that's what it says. Is it nothing to you? So I guess that ain't nothing to you, Jesus. Now I'm doing all this work, and she's sitting there. Okay. See, y'all know the Bible, so y'all know what's coming up next. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 41. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha. I just happened to think that's how he did it. Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things. There is need of only one or but a few things. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which, might I add, Martha, shall not be taken away from her. So no, I'm not going to tell her. You chill out. I mean, who even asked you to, to, to do all this food and stuff? All right, yes. Thank you for receiving me. I know you want to be hospitable, but I'm teaching. Matter of fact, um, Peter, move over. Come sit right here. No, that's, just, that's, that's just me kind of <laughs> adding a little something, something. So anyway, Jesus <laughs> places a higher value on focus solely on him. Regardless of any situation, he will not allow anyone to uh, divert our attention from him. Even if our family seeks our attention due to their worries or concerns, Mary and Martha. Amen. So the last thing here is, so let's no longer allow anyone's self-afflicted mental attack to take our attention away from Jesus. Martha attacked her own self. 
And so now we see that people who are like that, they want to take our attention away from Jesus, especially their family. Because they feel they have a right. Martha said that out in front of everybody. Now, Pastor John, this week in marriage ministry small group and earlier that day, you were sharing something related to this, keeping the focus on Jesus. Can share the revelation that God gave to you about this because that was three weeks ago, but God, I, I guess he just gave you that revelation this week. Okay. Yes, sir. So I have been going through my own mental battles. Um, we all pour out a lot, you know, especially at this church, to other people. We minister to folks all the time. We always love on people. And sometimes we get in relationships with people and they decide that they, you know, they don't want to change or, you know, right. they don't want to listen. Even though that same yeah. person can admit to you, you know what, I realize that you're doing things out of love. I realize that you're supporting me. I realize that you have my back. But for whatever reason, and then I end up going through my own mental attacks, you know, and my own uh, situations where I didn't want to pray after that. You know, like my whole day was altered, you know, because I was being affected all the time by the fact that somebody else's mental attacks basically were affecting me, you know. And one day I just made a decision with the Lord and I said, I'm not going to let anything break my joy. I'm not going to let anything break my joy. I'm not Thank you, Lord. Break my attention to God because I, the Bible also says that anyone who does not support their family is worse than an infidel. That's right. And I realized if I carry that attitude at my own house, you know, if I, if no matter what's going on with me, if I break my service to my family, then God is saying I'm worse than the worst than the worst. You know? That's right. If I break, if I change my attitude, I change my outlook of joy to anyone. They don't get the full service. They don't get what I have to offer. They don't get my fruit. You know what I mean? Right. Like, Amen. So I had to make a decision. Like, am I going to continue to allow these things that I'm accustomed to now? You know, people's attitudes, people's, you know, swaying feelings. Am I going to let that affect me to the point where I can no longer serve God? Amen. I can't serve them anymore. You know, or am I going to just keep a continued joy? And I love well, Pastor right, right there, I want you to elaborate. Because of their uh, feelings and, and attitudes and stuff, I can't serve the Lord. What, what does that mean? Because I start to focus on myself and how I felt instead of my devotion to God. Okay. Instead of where I actually get the fruit from. Right. You know, I started to focus on me. I started internalizing things. It made it where I did not want to have the discipline to pray. You know, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to praise the Lord. You know, I wanted to think about how I was being, how I wasn't being taken care of. You know, I didn't, and that became my disposition all the time. Like, like why is they acting like that? You know, they, I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And I was like, I'm going to bless the Lord. Man, you know what? I'm going to bless the Lord. Yes, sir. I'm going to have the Lord. I'm not going to let anything affect this because I'm familiar. I'm familiar with these attitudes. You know, I'm 33 years old now. Like, I'm familiar. We're familiar with our family. We're familiar with people we run with. We're familiar with our coworkers. We already know what they're going to do. That's right. We already know. And we're still choosing to make the same response. The same response. We already know that they're going to have an attitude sometimes. We already know that you're going, to be, you're going to be combative sometimes. We already know that you're going to do this and you're going to do that. But we make the decision, I'm going to fall for it again. I'm going to fall for it again. So I just broke up with it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just focus on God. Because, because me focusing on joy, me focusing on what God is actually doing within me, it always affects everyone. As a matter of fact, I had certain people approach me who had an attitude at the, t at the time. And why are you, ha why are you happy? <laughs> why are you happy? And I was like, I got joy. I got joy. And that's it. That's just it. So I really, it's, it's a revelation because I finally matured. I finally made a decision. Thank you, Lord.
You want to make a demon mad? If you want to make a demon mad, don't respond how they want you to respond. <laughs> I promise you. And that is, that's an excellent point. I, I wish I knew that decades ago. That people, gonna, you already know they're going to be like that. You already know that. Why respond? Why? Don't give in to that anymore. Hey, keep your joy. They do ba da 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 da. Do ba da 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 da. I'm gonna do bitty bitty bing. I ain't gonna let you bring me down no more. That's right. That's it. Everybody say that. I ain't gonna let you bring me down no more. That's right. With attitude. Little funny funniness. That's the way we go. So the life work homework is this. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us live by the following verse every single day. This verse. Isaiah 26 and 3. You will guard him and keep him in perfect peace. Him or her. This, everybody, the Bible is written in the male vernacular, but it's for everybody. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both its inclination, what I'm inclined to do, and its character, what I'm known to do, is stayed on you. Because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. That's why we are kept. Some people, um, they, they misquote this. Say, you know, the Bible says that he'll keep your mind in perfect peace. That's not what it says. He will keep you in perfect peace. Your entire being in perfect peace. If you keep your mind stayed on him. If we keep our minds stayed on God, we won't have to deal with our own mental attack. It's just that simple. Father, we come before you by Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for this prophetic message that you sent three weeks ago that is so useful, so relatable to our situations today, right now. And I thank you, Lord God, that you change not. You said, I am the Lord, I change not. And that is why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Father, thank you for your mercy. Well, every single one of us would have been consumed. And there would only be you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit on the earth. And that would just be it. And then you destroy the earth and y'all just be in heaven. The reason why you made us is because you wanted us and you still want us and you want us to have dominion on the earth. That's what you said. So Father, we're going to have to start living what you speak. We're going to have to start living the word, your word like never before and only thinking on your word. Well, we're going to have a bunch of foolishness and stupid stuff in us that we're believing and acting on. So, Father, now your Holy Spirit is telling me to pray this. Pray it this way. <sighs> we have been asking for peace. And the reason why we don't have it is because we haven't met the requirement of keeping our minds stayed on you. That is a requirement. That is a prerequisite. If we don't keep our minds on you, we're not going to be in peace. And your word says we'll be in perfect peace. Perfect peace. So Father, forgive us for allowing situations, people's attitudes and different things to cause us 
to lean to our own understanding. It's not a demon. Yes, a demon or a devil could have caused somebody to act a certain way, but we didn't have to act a certain way. Hallelujah. Or get down in the dumps. As Pastor Deshaun said, we could just, I still have my joy. Amen. I'm not going to give it up. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit who is within me. And that's the only fruit that I'm going to give. That is it. That's all you're going to get is joy out of me. That is it. You have any other problems? Go to God. And Father, we thank you for giving us the boldness and your word that backs up the boldness. All these and other blessings we ask and pray in Jesus' name, and you can expect better from us according to your word. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now, will you bow your heads and close your eyes and pray for those who aren't saved? Maybe there's someone in your family. Maybe there's someone here you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord. I want you to give your life to God. If you're listening, watching, if you're here, you say, I don't know Jesus. I want to know him personally. I, I need him in my life right now. Just simply repeat after me, just right where you are. You don't have to lift your hand. You don't have to come to the altar here. Make the altar right where you are and just simply talk to God. He's looking right at you right now. Even those who say, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. He's looking at you. He's expecting. He wants you. Jesus wants you. Arms wide open. Yes, the Jesus, the one who died on the cross. He wants you. So just bow your head, close your eyes, and say it. The Bible says in Luke, when you pray, say. Even if it's a whisper, just say it out. Just say, Father, I come before you now. By Jesus Christ. He died for me. And you raised him from the dead. Come into my life Jesus. And live your life through me. Father forgive me of all my sins. I want to be saved. I want to live for you. I'm tired of attacking myself. Attacking my own mind. I want peace. Peace. Come into my life. Thank you for forgiving me. I love you. And I live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for salvation. Amen. Amen. And she is trying to like, sometimes act like her voice isn't what it is. Um... You know, but the word says that that a light is not meant or intended to be hidden. You know, when the, the, the language light of the world is intended for you, yes. it describes you. It is not a motivation. It's not encouragement. It's reality. It's your identity. It's not Jesus trying to compl be complimentary about you. You understand what I'm saying? It's not Jesus saying nice things about you. It's Jesus giving you an instruction and a mandate for your life to be the light of the world. You have permission from God and power from God to light it up out here. You have the wisdom from, from God to light it up out here. To go through being and doing the kingdom work. That's who you are. It's not, it's not motivation. It's not encouragement. It's reality. You understand? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read the scripture before we, um, before we take this dip. Um, <laughs> know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ, to Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Amen. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That, like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, the body of sin might be destroyed. 
that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Praise the Lord. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Dejanay, listen. We're going to um, do a rededication before we get back in this um, baptism pool. So, if you just repeat after me, okay? All right. Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. And I regret that sin has kept me from a close relationship with you. But today... I want to change that. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Renew in me a new spirit. And I believe that without doubt that you died for all sin and you was resurrected on the third day. Resurrect me now from the death of all of my sins. I believe belong only to you now. Thank you for saving me. Amen. right now, Father, let it symbolize the washing of the inside, how that has happened, let it be the symbolized on the outside, Father, and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 thank you, Lord, I baptize you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got me? There we go. Thank you. Down, 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 down. Amen. God is good. Come on, let's thank God again for days and name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't forget, go to your small group this week. If you haven't signed up, go, go, go. You don't want to miss what God is doing. It has been powerful. Amen. Amen. Father, we just love you, bless you, praise you. I apply the blood of Jesus on every single one of us, every demon, every foul force that dare come against the health and healing process of anyone under the sound of my voice, be it here or those listening and watching. I command every one of you demons, go in Jesus' name. The very might and power of God comes against you. And Father, I thank you for shielding and protecting us. And Lord, we're going to do your will. We're not going to attack our minds or be the cause to attack someone else because of our own 
own mental attacks because Lord Jesus, you said that if we cause even one of your little ones to slip and fall, it's better for us that we have a millstone hung around our neck and we're cast into the midst of the sea. So Father, thank you for helping us with others and helping us with ourselves. And we'll forever give your name the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you. Thank you for joining us. Amen. God bless.